cool it is. Haven't driven her in a in a week, man. It's been a minute. I hit Rustin up there and wrote this. Just a quick little update. Oh, so I was going I was gonna do the video during the day, but I was like, nah. Um it was kinda hot. It's still kinda humid right now during the night, but the update is I got some parts. I'm gonna show y'all what I got. And basically it's mostly just transmission related stuff. Cause I'm planning to like get this car a little boosted. I say a little boost because I ain't going above 500. Um, just because the engine can only handle that much. Unless you want to like do internal work on it. And this is the crippled K24 with just the um, VTEC on the intake, not the exhaust. So everything is going to be in the trunk. Pop it open. And it's a mess in here. <laughs> So I'm going to just take out what I can. Well, take out what's relevant. Let y'all know what the plan is and what these parts are for. All right, first up, here is the Buddy Club P1 crank pulley kit. The advertiser is going to give you uh, eight horsepower in game, but I don't think it's going to be even on a stock engine like this. You'll see anything significant. But basically, this is a lighter weight. Um, pulley system, so it's gonna be less rotational mass on the engine, so it should run more efficiently. And I guess with like the right mods along with it, you should probably see like almost 10 horsepower in gains. Uh, HPS uh, radiator and coolant uh, piping, well tubing. This is flexible, I'll say tubing. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next two, right here. This thing was like. $250 and you wouldn't think so just by looking at it and touching it it's like aluminum well it is aluminum what this is is um like a bushing kind of just to fill up the void space when you uh like remove your subframe so the subframe on this car probably like most cars from this time period probably even now has a void space so you're gonna have a lot of vibrations like under like a lot of stress like let's say you boost the engine and you on a track or you drive hard on the back roads you're just gonna have a lot of like slop in between even though this is like snug hopefully snug <laughs> i don't think you want to like have that as a loose boat but basically pick one up right here it's gonna fill up that, that void space and reduce vibration significantly they say and this is by spoon so Y'all know who Spoon is, and probably don't, don't know how the motorsport got the Spoon stuff out the way because we got some transmission stuff right here. So, Master Slave Cylinder. Since I got a six-speed manual, I want to uh, shift faster. And it, this car right here, it, like, once you redline around 760, 7600, like, it'll kick you out of gear. Or it'll be like a huge delay. You got to wait till you drop down to six. 6800 just to shift in so you pretty much slow at red line and it's causing already slow so it's like hey can i can i not be any slower and right here is the um short shifter so i'm not doing a short shifter assembly it'll probably be like pointless i don't even think there's one for this car so i went ahead and got a short shifter and basically you just take off the center console with a cup holders and right under the radio, um, pretty much unscrew the, the shift knob. Drop this in there, but it's not that uh, simple. It's like a lot of steps. You gotta pretty much <laughs> get your hands down in there. Like, I'm gonna take this off one day and I might show y'all how the process is. I can't mention the master cylinder without mentioning the slave cylinder. And by the way, this also comes with the uh, clutch line. So you can put in your brake fluid in there and have everything ready to go. Well, not in there, but you know, right in the reservoir. <laughs> so this looks different than the stock uh, slave cylinder. Let me show y'all down there. Let me zoom in. See how the clutch line goes into the top. And it'll basically go down and do its thing, get into the transmission how it's different over there behind the trunk so the main difference is like i said oem is going in through the uh, slave cylinder 
and the fluid is going in through some kind of route to get to the pump or the plunger, whatever you want to call it. With the K Tune slave cylinder, it's just going around. It, it doesn't even go in through, it just goes in here, dumps in the fluid, and it does this thing. So, with the uh, OEM, it's being choked off at some point around the top part. So, that's where you get your delay and shifting. So, all the fluid is just being ran straight through with no restriction, and you'll be able to shift faster. Next up is the uh, header. Can't say headers because it's just one pipe. <laughs> So this is basically gonna be a bigger, like a, like a larger diameter piping from the stock header. And it's gonna go into an exhaust that I don't have yet. It will be a pseudo two and three quarters exhaust all the way to the, um, the muffler. And it will have like four inch tips. So I don't have that yet. That was like the first thing I was gonna get, but I was like, I wanna handle the transmission first because it's the most important thing. And the reason why I don't need driver's car is because the clutch system is ass. <laughs> like, I have a clutch kit in the trunk, so I'm going to bring that out soon and show y'all what I got. Before I bring out the clutch, I'm going to mention the um, knuckle assembly I got here. And I'll show you why I got it. Walk to the front of the car. You'll see my passenger front wheel. I got four lugs. I was changing my brakes one day, and I snapped off an old lug thread along with the lug nut attached to it and it was like a, it's like a real tedious process trying to get that um like the dust shield out the way put in a new uh, thread so i figured i might as well just change out the whole unit and do the other side as well because if that snapped off then who knows what if the another one snap off and i've got like three lugs and i'm stuck what the fuck Bastard. Anyway, I might do this last. It's not really a surprise, it's just it's ugly. The box is ugly. It is the clutch. ACT Extreme Clutch. Extreme Street Clutch. And it was nice enough to tell me that I need a master cylinder for my clutch line, and that's why I got it. And I also paired it up with the uh We'll plan on pairing up with the slave cylinder as well because you're dealing with a higher pressure plate so you definitely don't want it to be choked off at all and this clutch kit is actually a whole kit comes with everything oh man flywheel disc pressure plate alignment tools and um thinking it's gonna handle about 300 foot pounds of torque I don't know about horsepower though. I should have went with the um, another brand, but this will do for now. Like, I was being told that if I'm gonna go boost, I should got a twin disc. That way, um, like maintenance, you can just get out one of the discs and not have to deal with doing a whole replacement. You know, getting a whole new kit just put a new disc but uh, I'll get that next whenever this is dead yeah last but not no son no I'm scared that oh hell nah I'm scared that if I put <laughs> the parts back in here my car gonna have bugs in it sheesh bro y'all see what this is already it's supposed to be a big brake kit but it's not big enough Came from the Acura RL, and uh, it's gonna need some refurbishing. Like, for real, it's not a, really a bad looking one, actually. I've seen some that look like it's been hit with sludge hammers. Like, how the hell your brake caliper got dense? Like, was you driving with a two spoke wheel in the desert full of rocks or something? I'm gonna um, probably just, I'm saying probably, I'm definitely gonna paint this red and get the proper accessories for it. I don't wanna be leaking no brake fluid. Got this for 200 bucks. It's gonna 
be some minor work on it and should be in action. Let's see if I have to cut. Yep, I might have to. These corners right here at the top might interfere. Well, it definitely will interfere with the inner part of the caliper. Wow. So while this is off the car, I might as well chop that. Yep. I say these aren't that big because they're like 320 millimeters like for the rotors. I plan on getting a case for it. Get a 356 millimeter rotor for the uh, front front brake system. And then in the rear, I'll keep the existing caliper. I might actually get a um, power stop red rear caliper and uh there's a bracket on fast brakes that will allow you to run a 330 millimeter rotor in the rear so it'll fill up this void space i don't i don't like void space like and it's best to have bigger brakes anyways and up front 356 but right now we're going to be running like 320 up front <laughs> And if I get the fast brakes, it's gonna be 330 in the rear, and it's gonna be like, how the hell you got bigger rotors in the rear of a front wheel drive car, like, or in any car? And I mean, and I'ma just tell people like, that's temporary, bro. I'm not keeping this RL brakes. Honestly, I don't even know why I bought it. I'm just, just buying random shit. Well, that stuff wasn't random. This was just like a. I thought just an experiment look the only thing that I recently bought for this car that's hooked up to it is the K tuner everything else is just chilling in the trunk this car has been chilling in the driveway for the past few weeks I've been driving my Honda Accord to and from work so I mean I'm, there's no rush on this build it's probably gonna be finished properly I'm just gonna say it's definitely gonna be finished next year I don't want to go into 2023 like, damn, I'm not done yet. Like, I got enough time. This is not a car that's been from a barnyard. It's already running. So all I got to do is basically do basic maintenance and get the performance stuff in there. And some of the, some stuff going to be OEM, really. Like, but not, not a lot of it. So what I can do right now is just continue stockpile parts. And I'm shifting with a phone in my hand. I don't have my action camera. <laughs> Get another red light, so I gotta I'm just go in neutral. But yeah, I'm gonna just continue to stockpile parts and have the car continue to sit in the driveway because, like I said, there ain't no rush on the build. I already got the uh, transmission stuff dealt with, and I'm going into the, the braking system. That's why I got that um, RL caliper. So we'll go ahead and, like I mentioned, get the rear power stop calipers. That way I got functioning 100% brakes. Uh, transmission dealt with. And then I can do other big projects like deal with the uh, interior, get a paint job, um, and then we'll focus on getting this boost done because that's all that needs to be done right there. And I didn't mention set, uh, suspension, uh, new coilovers. Um, gonna get me a camber kit. Then we're 100% done. So yeah, just stay tuned. Um, I'll be doing updates here and there. Kind of busy, but try to get in at least once a month. <laughs> this was a really past overdue a month, so. I'm going to try to get these parts in, introduce it, and then we all see the process. So I'm going to end it right here. Catch y'all later. Deuce.